All right, there he is, right there. That's how you want him to light up. Ah, and now he moved. There we go. And you can really read the fish. You see my jerk bait coming right there, behind, right there above him. It's almost to him. You kind of see the mood of the fish, and that ought to tell you a lot about how you need to work that jerk bait. We're gonna go find a sail. We'll try him one more cast. See, he's moving around quite a bit. That's a hard fish to catch when they're moving like that. There he comes. Got him. Oh, that's a good one too. See, that took, oh, come on, baby. That took a bunch of cash to get that fish to bite. That's a great big in there, though. Stay down there, stay down. That is Garmin Live Scope. Big old Oklahoma bass. So we started out here this morning. I started with an Alabama rig. And I, I love to throw the Alabama rig when I can, you know, when it's when it's permitted or when it's in the rules or just fun fishing. It's really easy to see on the live scope. It's also a fish catcher in the winter time. But a lot of times pressured fish or, uh, you know, just certain days they won't follow that A-rig or they won't hit it. Uh, we came out here and we got over, you know, the first four or five fish and brought that Alabama rig right over the top of them. And I didn't get any of them really to give me that much attention to that, to that Alabama rig. So I, Usually my first move in the winter time is switch to a jerk bait. Pulled up to the first fish, threw over it. Had to really work that jerk bait slow and just sh short, subtle twitches. And notice the first fish that sat under it, you know, begin to come up. And that's what you have to do with this live scope. I've got, you know, 15, 20 rods rigged up with all something I think I can catch them on. But day to day, you have to change with the fish. And, and that's what the Garmin Live Scope does so well, is I can tell, I can read the temperament of the fish, see if they're, if they're running from my bait, seeing if they're following it. Um, sometimes it's just a color change that, that will, you know, get them to go ahead and trigger the strike. But a lot of times, you know, you just run through a different baits and every day is different. But generally on each day, you can find a different bait that they will eat. And that's what we did right there. We went through the Alabama rig, went to the jerk bait, noticed they're pretty slow this morning. That jerk bait, I can stop and sit it right there in front of their face, and that they can't help it. They got to eat it. Usually, when there's two of them like that, they're even easier to catch. Here he comes. Got him. A lot of times, you can read the mood of that fish. You know, if he comes up there real slow at it or he's only approaching it when it's sitting still, I'll do a lot smaller twitches. You know, instead of ripping that bait fast, move it real slow. You just gotta keep that fish interested. You know, if he's coming super fast, I'll keep it moving really fast. If he's just barely coming at it, it's just, I mean, you just gotta match the temperament of the fish. And it takes some getting used to to, to get to where you can match that, but the more you do it, See that bait's way over that fish right there. See if he could come up. He's still, he's kind of acting like he might. A lot of times you can sit it there right above them, and and they will they will come to get it. And it almost seems like they're not coming. At times, it's so slow. But you know, whenever guys are doing those catching them, you know, old school th 20, 30 second pauses. You don't realize that that fish is, is sitting there looking at that bait and he's coming, but now you actually can see it in real time and see, you know, how long do I really have to let that bait sit there to get that fish to bite it? See my jerk bait coming right here above him, almost to him there. There it is, almost above him. 
not acting like he wants it. So let it sit there. A little bitty twitches sometimes. And one thing you'll notice is that different different days, it could be the same weather pattern, but for some reason different days those fish really react differently to certain baits. And you can figure that out so quickly with this live scope. Here we go, he's coming up for it, you see that? Real, real slow, so I'm gonna try to just barely match him. There he comes, got it, big one. That's a grown one there. You see how slow he came when you just barely twitch that thing. You just barely move it. I mean this is a this is a seven or eight pounder right here probably. Maybe. Come on, baby. Look he's got that jerk bait just choked. Look at that fish. Look at that fish. Come on, baby. Come on. Come here. Come here. Oh, what a tank. Look at that one. Here she come. Got her. You know, just a general rule of thumb that I have, woo! is the higher the fish is in the water column the more active they are the more aggressive they are Woo. the fish that are up in the water column are a whole lot easier to trigger that strike that fish was sitting oh four foot deep we're in you know we're in 15 foot of water here that fish was sitting though four foot deep and i'll show you look on the live scope right now this fish here sitting four to five foot deep has something to do with you know, the higher they are in that water column, the easier they are to, to get to bite. And they're just out there pushing that bait around. That one should be catchable there too. The key is getting that bait past them. You don't want to throw it so far that you've got to work it, you know, 30, 40 feet over open water whenever you can't see it. You want to get it to them quick. So there's a fine line between throwing it too far and not throwing it far enough, especially with a jerk bait to get it down to them. You've got to be prepared. I mean, you're not fishing the bottom whenever you're out here using the live scope for the most part in the winter time. I mean, most of the time these fish are suspended, have multiple different baits rigged up for multiple different depth ranges, you know? You never know if they're going to be two foot off the bottom or 25 foot off the bottom, but you just got to read them. I mean, the biggest fish I've caught out here was, uh, Dead of winter, sitting in about 20 foot of water, but it's only about four foot deep, you know. And you know, something really interesting, we've always heard, you know, you got to change your cadence, this and that with the cadence, the cadence this, cadence this. Well here, I can figure the cadence out for each fish. What does each fish want? You know, the cadence isn't always the same, but you can figure out the temperament of that individual fish and get on them so quick and know, know what to do to trigger that bite. You know, everybody always says, oh, the bass are under the bait. Bass are under the bait. Well, when we first came out here, the bass were sitting on top of this bait. The bait was all sitting down 20 foot deep and these bass were all out here suspended above it. So I've been noticing a lot of times this time of year, those bass will suspend over that bait. And I don't know if it's that they're waiting on a shad to come up out of that school and get away from them or if that's just where they feel comfortable in the water column but a lot of times they're sitting up above them now in the mornings generally these bass are are up above them and, and the baits all down at a certain depth but as the sun warms up these shad will start to come up and get in their little schools right now they're basically out here in one big school but as the day gets warmer they'll start to come up and get into smaller smaller groups come up off the bottom then the bass will start to get under them but generally in the mornings out here when they're easiest to catch these bass are sitting above these shad just like they are right now these fish sit above those shad like that and that's when they're easy to catch when those shad start getting up off the bottom they start getting harder and harder to catch 
Got him. See that fish started out. Let me get this fish unhooked here. That fish started out out here when I first seen him. I cast at him, I was behind him, I cast at him, I was behind him, and I let him whenever I threw over here. I couldn't even see him, you know, he wasn't where I threw, but that's the way he was going, and I, I, I let him just enough to, to uh, put that jerk bait right in front of him. That's a hard fish to catch, but sometimes you've got to do that if they're, if they're really active. The colder it gets, the stiller they'll sit out here, you know, almost stationary, but sometimes they get to moving and you've got to got to get a bait in front of them the biggest thing is keeping this fish on your screen you know follow him i see guys a lot of times out here that they'll find a fish find a fish take their foot off the trolling motor make a cast look back down there you can't do that you've got to keep that foot on this trolling motor at all times a lot of times i've noticed if you find one fish suspended a lot of times you can get him to bite but when you find two fish suspended right next to each other, it's like they can't stand that the other one might get to eat that jerk bait or a rig or whatever it is. And if you get one of them following it and another one to be act interested, one of them is going to eat it. It's it's just a competition between the two of them. They can't they cannot stand it. So when I see two or three, I have very high hopes that I'm going to get bit. Now I'm passing up a lot of fish that are out here, but I really. I'm looking for the ones higher in the water column. I mean, we'll, we'll still try, but this morning with, with things being active, I'm gonna try to target the more aggressive, higher in the water column fish. You know, one way I measure this, I usually leave it on 60 foot. And the reason I do that is because I know that my boat is about 20 foot long. You know, I mean, you gotta have something in your mind that you can compare that distance to or that way you can get, you know, you can make a cast quickly and know about how far it is. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. A lot of times if I see one like that and I threw too far past him, I just work it pretty quick till I get it, you know, pretty close to him. Like now I'm starting to get close to him. I'm gonna slow it down. He just seen it. I saw him turn around, here he comes. Real slow though. Oh, there he goes, he kind of like that. Here he's coming back, he's coming back. Got him. See, he acted real lethargic and slow for the longest time. He finally got up there close to it. I just letting it sit still. And I, I gave it one sharp twitch when he was close and it just set him off. He went nuts. It's all about, especially, especially on that jerk bait, it's all about reading that fish. You know, he came up so slow to that fish. The last five foot, you know, the distance between him and the jerk bait, he, uh, he just covered it. I mean, it took him 10 seconds to cover it. And he got close and I gave it one real sharp twitch. He didn't move the bait very far. And, he, and you saw the fish just, just roll. I mean, he took off hard at it. You know, once you get him to commit like that, then you pretty much, it, it's pretty simple, but you got to read that fish until until that point. You know, it, it sometimes it takes them a while to finally decide they want to bite it, and it takes them a while to close that distance. 